It's at 937 Hard for his number one for hip hop and RB. We got Cassidy in the studio today. What's up with you? What's going on, Cassidy? I'm excited. I'm happy. My album come out Tuesday, November the 16th, so I'm excited. It feels like it's been forever. Well, not necessarily for me, but it has been a long time. I know people have been waiting a long time. I apologize for making y'all wait, but I had to get my business right, get the paperwork right, the behind the scenes stuff right, and that take a little period of time longer than people would think. But now that I got that situated, I'm going to make sure I'm never missing an action again for that period of time. Yeah, I mean, I know that you had quite a recovery to go through yeah. uh, and everything like that. And thank God you're okay, yeah, first that, of all. That added to the time period that I was missing an action, too. Dealing with the um, jail situation, you know what I mean? Um, I was facing a death penalty or life without the possibility, so I had to go through that. And then right after I got through that, I got in a nearly fatal accident. I was in a coma for over a week, about nine days. I had amnesia for about three or four months, so I, it took me time to remember my music, remember my raps, even remember that I was a rapper and what I was doing. So when I came out with my last album, Bars, I wasn't fully recovered. So a lot of the things I was talking about was my relationship with God, the things I was going through, how I was feeling. So it was more of a personal album, not really for the radio or for the videos or, you know what I'm saying, not really for the people. It was mostly just to show them how I made it through what I went through. But now years done passed since I went through that. So I'm I'm back in my happy mode. I got the smile back on my face. I'm ready to take care of business now. So this album, Cash, is completely different. And that's why I came with the first single, Drummer Bass, to show people that I'm excited and I'm having fun again. Mm. Um, yeah, I just couldn't believe when I heard about the accident. I mean, we, we talked about it all the time on the radio and stuff. I mean, it just sounded like your recovery time was just unbelievable. I mean, yeah. you had to learn to do certain things all over again, right? Yeah, well... Um, I, I didn't um fully I ain't have four like I could remember um certain things in my life but like 15 years out of my life that like the last 15 years was like blanked out so if I knew you from when I was a kid like my mom and people in my family like you know that I knew for years before 15 years ago then I could remember but things that happened in the last five to ten years I couldn't really remember so even songs like hotel when I'm a hustler songs that I performed a million times I couldn't remember the words or, you know what I'm saying, the dance moves or I couldn't remember none of the raps I wrote, you know what I'm saying? So I had to really keep listening to my music, keep reading my raps, keep looking at pictures, keep hearing stories and just recovering, you know what I'm saying, getting my rest and taking my medicine in order for me to get better. And that must have been really frustrating. I mean, yeah, while I was going through it, it was frustrating. But now that I made it past it, I knew everything happened for a reason. And I'm happy it happened because it made me into a stronger person and prepared to go face whatever I gotta face anything that come across me I'm, I'm willing to deal with it so I'm happy that it happened and that's why I'm going so hard right now with this album so uh, it's called Cash a straight hustler well it's called cash C-A-S-H it stand for whatever you want it to stand for some people make it stand for cash a straight hustler cash always spit hard cash always smoke haze like a lot of different <laughs> things man. so what know. is it to you um I mean, it, it, I just called it cash because everybody need cash. Everybody need money. Yes, they do. No matter how rich you is, you can be a billionaire and you're still trying to think of ways to get more money. And I feel as though if you're in love with music, you need this album. So that's why I named it Cash. And who's on the album? Um, This time I didn't use publicity stunt features just like people that's on the charts. Just so I could get on the charts. I really did features with people that I got relationships with or people that was around me at the time. So I put everybody from my production company that's... On my label on the album, Chubby Jag from South Central, Nayla Boss from London, and A.R. Ad from North Philadelphia. They on my production company, Larceny Family, so they on the album. But I did records with Game from the West Coast. I did another record with Maya. I got a, a reggae record with Notch and Junior Reed. Wow. So, um, yeah, I know I'm leaving some, I know I'm leaving a feature out or something like that. I know I, I be having trouble remembering a person I did it, um, a song with. I know I'm probably leaving somebody out, but... That's okay. This yeah. album is not really surrounded around the features, you know what I'm saying? It's really about me, and even the features that I had on my album, nine times out of ten, I wrote the wrote the part that they even sung or did on my album, you know what I'm saying? Because I just wanted to show people that I could make hit records and not give the producer or the feature credit for my hit records that I have. Well, I, I respect you for that. Because a lot of people do ride off their features. Uh, you're on Carmelo Anthony's label? No, um, I'm on my own label. I got my own production company, Larceny Family Entertainment, and I got distribution through E1. But me and Carmelo got a partnership. I got a partnership with Carmelo before I got my distribution deal with E1 because I wanted to have bigger budgets so I could compete with the 
the cats that's on the major labels mm-hmm. but still be an independent artist and get independent money on the back end. Okay, so the, it's way, not, the it's way it's being reported is you are um, being released off Carmelo Anthony's new label, Crossover Entertainment. No. But that's not, that's not right. Okay. Carmelo do got a production company called Crossover Entertainment. He got artists like Diego Cash signed to his production company. But I'm signed to my own production company, Larceny Family. Me and Melo got a partnership for him to be able to bring money to the table for me to get the right type of budgets that I need. That's something that I structured on my own. Something that never was like, you can't open up a book and read how to do this format that I put together. It's just that I didn't want to go to a record label like um, a Clive Davis or a Jimmy Iovine or one of them guys and ask for a loan because we don't have a relationship. Mm -hmm. So the way they would make me pay them back would be a lot different than somebody that you got a, a friendship with. So that's why I reached out to people. I'm like, I know millionaires. I know people with a lot of money and got a lot of money to spend. So that's why I just used my mind and put together the right type of business plan. Once I got the partnership edged in stone and the paperwork with Carmelo, that's when I went and got distribution for my production company. And on the strength that I got the partnership with him, that's why I let Crossover Entertainment get, you know what I'm saying, get their stamp on my album or they sign or they symbols. And that's why... I, it might have been the confusion and people might have thought that I was on Crossover Entertainment. Well, Carmelo Anthony, I mean, for him to invest his money, must he must really, truly believe in your project. I mean, anybody should believe in my project. I'm the best rapper out, man. I always proved that nobody could really, you know what I'm saying, line for line mess with me. I just was going through a lot of tri- trials and tribulations that was slowing me up. But um, he's seen me executing a lot of short-term goals, like... He seen me doing what I was saying I was going to do, so that's what made him believe in me even more. He got a relationship with a lot of different rappers in the game, but they never presented the right type of plan the right type of way like I did. So he believed in my situation and invested the money, and I appreciate that. That's why we got a relationship. Well, don't you think that some rappers have no business sense? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. You know what I'm saying? That's why they can't bring the right type of situation to the table to get somebody with money to invest. If you just like, yo, let me hold this or let me have this, a person not going to be willing to give you no money, but if you come with the right type of game plan and it's mapped out, then you could be able to bring, bring it to the table and get it done, and that's what I did. So you wrote 99% of the verses I'm reading here? No, I wrote all of the verses that I rap, but I mean like the, the hooks, like the, 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 the choruses that I got featured singing and things like that. I even wrote that, like the song I did with Maya. Um, I wrote the chorus for that song. Um, she wrote the bridge, but um, I wrote the chorus on the song that I did with Maya. Um, the chorus that I did on the song with Nayla Boss, my artist from my production company. You know what I'm saying? Like, I played a huge part in writing a lot of the music on my album, opposed to, you know what I'm saying, like how it used to be. Yeah, I mean, we everybody have a ghostwriter. No, 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 I never had a ghostwriter. I used to always ghostwrite for other people as far as the bars was concerned. But I mean, as far as choruses was concerned, as far as the direction Are they bringing, the song, like, a production person to do it? No, Swiss Beats used to play a huge part in, like, writing my choruses or... The singer that I might get on the song would write the chorus in the past, hmm. but that changed now. You so know you got to control your whole album? Yeah, without a question. I executive produced my whole album. So was that nerve-wracking or was that um, more fun for you? Um, it would probably be nerve-wracking for a different type of artist that ain't have my qualifications. But for me, it was... Um, it was a blessing. That's something that I always wanted to do. So when I got free from my paperwork and was able to solidify it, it felt good. So I was happy to do it. Mm. Because I just want to come out with hit records and get respected for me making a hit record. People thought I wasn't capable of that when I started off as a battle rapper. They're like, yeah, he can rap, but can he make a hit? But I've been proving it over and over again, but I still ain't been getting the respect I feel as though I deserve. And I, I could only feel as though the reason is that they probably been giving other people the credit for the for the hit records. Like when I had Hotel with R. Kelly, that was my first single. That was a big record, appealing to over 100 million in audience. It was on top radio, instant, top 40 radio and everything. So it was like a real, real, real big record. You know what I'm saying? And um, that was my first single that I ever released. And I, and I felt as though I should have got more credit for that song. But I, maybe Swiss Beats might have got a lot of the credit for that hit. Maybe R. Kelly might have got a lot of the credit for that hit. Right. You know what I'm saying? And um, I come with another record, like Get No Better. And You know what I'm saying? Maybe Mashonda got partial credit and then Swiss Beats got credit. It's like I just wanted to show people that I could make a hit and I could do what I need to do. So when I go to negotiate these deals, the people know what I'm capable of opposed to somebody else. Right. So speaking of Swiss Beats, was he actively involved in this album at all or no? Um, me and Swiss still got a relationship, but he wasn't involved at all in this album. We got a record out right now with John Legend called Searching, and it's out like on the internet and things like that, running around on the streets. But um, 
And I got another record on a five song EP that's for sale on iTunes right now called Feast to Feast. And the record is called Henny and Picardi. I got Swiss on the chorus. But um, as far as my album is concerned, I wanted to stay away from working with Swiss. People already know me and Swiss can make good records because we've been doing it up until this point. I just wanted to separate myself from him and show people that I could still make a hit record on my own. Hmm. And speaking of Swiss Beats, the drink in my two-step situation, mm -hmm. are you allowed to comment on that at all? Um, yeah, I was talking to him slightly about it. Um, there's some miscommunication and things like that, but um, I'm not too sure about the technicalities of that because I didn't make the beat on that. Well, all I, I know think is that I heard the finished beat. Yeah, the man that supposedly was involved in the whole situation, he wants one point five million dollars mm -hmm. off the success of that record, "Drinking My Two Step." Yeah. Um, and basically, long story short, um, he says that Swiss, I guess, offered him something like five percent or something. Oh no, I'm sorry, he, he, for five thousand dollars or five percent of ownership of the record mm -hmm. at the time, which he rejected. But it's 2010, and the record came out in 2007. So what's the deal? I mean, was it shocking? It must have been shocking. I mean, not really shocking for me. I mean, things like that happen in the game. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes producers might not do 100% of the beat that you that you hear that they produced. That's just how it go. I mean, the biggest names in the world got producers behind the scenes doing beats for them and things like that. Or maybe it might have been a sample in Drinking Two-Step that Swiss got the producer to play over. Like maybe Swiss might have sampled something and then got him to play the instruments over. And it might have been a miscommunication of how the, how the producer gets paid and things like that. But I'm not sure how that go, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I, he's not suing me. So it's like my legal team not really dealing with that. With that. They named, but they, are you named in the lawsuit at all or no? No, 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 because I don't have nothing to do with the production of the... Because like you the, paid for the beat, for Swiss Beats, right? So you, you basically bought it from him, correct? No, no, I didn't buy the beat from Swiss. It's like when you, when a person produce a, produce a record, it's like y'all did the record together. But um, um, I don't play no part in the, in, in, the, in the beat, so it's like I don't have nothing to do with that situation that they're dealing with. Okay. So I did talk to. I, I did. It feels like a lot of money. That's the reason why I'm asking you. But that, just because somebody gets sued, like you could want to, you could say you suing somebody for um, a billion dollars. You know what I'm saying? That don't necessarily mean you're going to get none of that type of money from the lawsuit. You know what I'm saying? You could just put up a random number that you just want to sue somebody for. But when you go to court, even if you do beat the case to a certain extent, there's not no guarantee that you're going to get nowhere near that type of money. You know right. what I'm saying? So. Don't just get caught up into the $1.5 million thing, you know what I'm saying? That's just a number that they probably just threw out there to make it seem like it's a serious situation. November 16th, cash will be in stores. Cassidy is back. Without and, a uh, question. You listen, you need to go get this album. It's an incredible album. I and usually have more energy than this. I'm losing my voice. I've been on this promo run. I heard I've that been you've been everywhere, so congratulations. That's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, without a question. <laughs> What's I'm, your favorite uh, record off the album? Um... I don't have a favorite. I tell people I love all my songs like my kids, so I can't pick so a favorite So what record song. would you like us to play right now? Um, I would like you to play uh, Drum or Bass, my single. We've been playing that, so you got to give me another one. Oh, a different one? Let's play Paper Up. I got to get my Paper Up. The album is called Cash, and that's the reason why I'm on this promo run right now, so I can get my Paper Up. So let's get into that. <laughs> you don't look like you need it. You got, <laughs> you got all that ice out over there. All right, Cassidy, thank you so much for stopping by. It's Hot 937. All right. <laughs>